given a few talks before, but never to so many people in such a diverse and inclusive atmosphere. And that's what I'll be talking about through Hamilton lyrics. And for those of you who don't know, because I met one of you at lunch, <laughs> Hamilton is a Broadway musical that uses hip hop lyrics to tell the tale of Alexander Hamilton. And what's so unique about it is that most of the cast are people of color. And that represents America today, not America then. So people of color in the musical have a say in what happens to them. And that wasn't always the case back then. So now I want to find out a bit more about you. Can you raise your hand if you have the power to hire people? Like an engineering manager, HR, okay. And raise your hand if you're on a team. Like engineering, designer, developer, okay. Any other students, people looking for jobs? People who are new to their company. Okay. Okay. Oh. So wanted to know who are you? I forgot to change the slide. <laughs> okay. Now about me. I am a junior in college. I'm only 20, but my mind is older. I am a self-proclaimed developer avocado, evangelist, advocate. I like getting people excited about technology. I develop mobile apps and web apps. Oh, and I like avocados. Okay. Okay. So I want you to turn to the person next to you, people around you, and find out what you think diversity and inclusion are, because they're different to everyone. Maybe like 30 seconds. Okay. So that's been about 30 seconds. <laughs> Let's find out what Apple's Inclusion and Diversity website has to say about diversity and inclusion. Okay. So according to Apple's Inclusion and Diversity site, diversity is having more than one race, gender, or ethnicity. It's being richly representative of all people, of all backgrounds. It's the entire human existence, or experience, sorry. And <clears throat> inclusion. We want all employees to be comfortable bringing their entire selves to work every day because we believe our individual backgrounds, perspectives, and passions help us create the ideas that move us forward. Creating an inclusive culture takes both commitment and action. We're helping employees identify and address unconscious racial and gender bias, and we're also cultivating diverse leadership and tech talent. Already, you can see that the main difference between diversity and inclusion is that diversity, you can measure, it's a statistic. Inclusion is more of what you do. And here are some stats. Okay. Facebook recently released the LGBTQIA stats in July. This is big news because they had never done that before. And 7% of the 61% of employees who replied identified as LGBTQIA. And since 2014, Google's technical female um, employees has risen 2%. And the number of at black and Latino employees has gone up 1%. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> Despite these um, companies releasing their numbers, things are still not looking up. According to a recent study by Accenture and Girls Who Code, the number of women in computing jobs will go down by 2025 from 24% to 22%. So what can we do about this? What is the industry doing about this? Some of the bigger companies like Twitter, Facebook, Apple, Dropbox, they have the resources to appoint a head of diversity, maybe a team for the cause. They're sponsoring events for targeted towards minority students, or Black Girls Code. They're, um, Square recently open sourced their Square Women program to help other companies and people find out how to have inclusive events. And for you who said that you have the power to hire people, I wonder, does your company look for prestige? How prestigious is this applicant's computer science department? 
Because if so, you're leaving out so many people who don't have access to your company. You're going against inclusion. Instead, you should hire for slope, not Y intercept. You should hire for potential, for being young, scrappy, and hungry. And that's not measurable, but you can find out about that by reaching out to more diverse pool of applicants, people who didn't go to Ivy Leagues, MIT, or other schools. Two summers ago, I taught algebra to kids in East Palo Alto, and that sounds like it's um, fancy, famous neighbor of Palo Alto, but that's not the case. These kids, their families were immigrants. They didn't have food. And I was so excited because I was like, I can have an impact on these kids. But I was disappointed when most of them, they didn't want to be there. They were disrespectful to the teacher and myself, except for two. And those kids made me want to get up in the morning. And because of them, I created an online web service to provide mentorship and college and high school prep resources to them. I still keep in touch with one of them, and I'm happy to say that he is currently taking classes at Street Code Academy, which is a program for communities of color that educates kids of color, getting them involved in computer programming. And while this program wasn't around when I got started in programming, I did get my start at a one-day all-girls coding camp. But do you know what kept me there? Diversity programs that showed me that there are others like me, that I'm not the only one with imposter syndrome or the only one with a different background who's different from people at tech companies. So click, boom, I'm in tech and I'm trying to stay there. But it's tough because guess what? Computer science is a tough subject, and many classes are meant to weed out college students. Their Google I.O.'s slogan this past summer was Eat, Sleep, Code, and that's not healthy. Not everyone wants to do that. You might want to have a life outside of that. You might want to have another job, see your friends. And I felt guilty when I was doing things like that, when I wasn't coding. But it's these diversity programs, like a Twitter Android program I participated in in July, that reminded me why I began coding, to build cool themes and to have an impact and reach many people. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm trying to pass on to younger, the younger generation. I helped organize the Bay Area's largest women's hackathon I helped organize a code day for 80 students, developers, and business people. And I tried to emphasize to them that I was like them one day. I didn't think I could go into tech. I wasn't a STEM person growing up. I hated math. But when you see people who look like you, who have similar backgrounds, that empowers you. And ultimately, that's what I want to do with tech. And that's what you all can do with people at your companies. To all of you who said that you were on teams, you probably thought that you don't have power. Well, guess what? You do. Just because you can't hire diverse talent doesn't mean that you can't maintain it. It's your job to include them, to show them the ropes. Something that took you a few months to learn at the company you can tell them so that they don't make the same mistakes. Maybe a manager or someone who's an executive is like, I want all of your opinions, but really they don't. They just want maybe one or two people. Do you remember in high school, middle school, when you were the new kid, or there was a new kid, who didn't know where to sit, didn't know where the library was? Be that person who reaches out and says, this is where this room is, this is where you should sit, Sit with me, be the inclusion, be the ally. Help get other people into the room where it happens. And a lot of what I've learned 
<clears throat> done, including being here today, would not have happened if it weren't for people who showed me that I could make it like them, that they were discriminated against, harassed maybe, but they persevered and they pushed through. And when you do that, you show others beneath you or beside you or even above you that they can do it too. <clears throat> to those of you who have the power to increase diversity, to hire people, ask yourself, how can I empower marginalized people? And then your company will reap the benefits. This summer, I was at a company that was not diverse. And when I first started writing this talk, I thought that inclusion bred diversity. I was wrong. It was inclusive to me because a diverse, my diverse teammate or manager had paved the way for me. She showed me that I could be myself. Like, I could laugh loudly, wear pink, um, wear a skirt, all things that my mom told me not to do. She told me to assimilate. Don't assimilate. Find someone on your team, above you, below you, somewhere, and know that you can be yourself. And if you feel that you have to assimilate, that's not the company for you. And stop talking about culture fit. Don't fire someone because they're not googly enough. It took time for me to come out of my shell at this company. And by the end of the summer, the CEO was like, why didn't you talk this much before? Like, why didn't you organize that meetup in the beginning? And I was like, I don't know. But really, I realized that I could be myself. I could take chances. I could start things. Ultimately, inclusion is teamwork. It's a two-way street. I felt included with people who didn't look like me because they reached out to me in return. And it took time for them to do that. At one point, a few years ago, I was at a non-diverse, in a non-diverse group, and it wasn't inclusive either. I was a youth umpire for softball and baseball, the only girl, and one of maybe two people of color. And I didn't feel valued. Even though I was umpire of the year one year, they didn't ask for my input as much. And some other boy was promoted, paid more than me, and I was like, I worked more hours than you, I did more outreach, and so I left. And you should have the courage to say, just because I get paid well, just because I enjoy the job, doesn't mean my input is valid. Your feelings and your experiences are very valid. And you should feel free to talk about them. And if you don't feel that you can talk about them, it might not be the place for you. <clears throat> Wait. So you will want to have you don't just want Washington on your side. You want the whole Adams administration. Not just one person. You want a team. Because it takes a team. Okay. So what are some benefits of diversity and inclusion? Sure, you get multiple backgrounds, perspectives, new inputs. Different people can consider different edge cases, solve problems faster, clean up your code when you can't find the bug. But ultimately, there's also financial benefits. <laughs> Women-led companies are 15% more likely to make more money. And another solution is mentorship. This is a two-way street. Too often, a mentor is like, let me offer you some free advice and they may act patronizing to you. And once I had a mentor like that, and I said, after that coffee date, I was like, thanks, and then didn't respond, didn't keep in touch, and that's okay. Yeah. 
Recently, I've begun going out for coffee with people, asking people I don't know to get coffee. It's a quick and easy way to find out if you can tell, if you can learn from them, and also if you can teach them something too. I reached out on social media to people I don't know, and some of them helped edit this talk. So be, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to reach out and say, I can learn from you, but I can also teach you something too. It's a symbiotic relationship. Okay. You want mentors who can tell your story, not because it's the same story, but because they live something similar. And it's not saying that all mar marginalized people have the same backgrounds, we don't. But ultimately, if they persevered, if they have grit, they can pass it on to you. And then you can pass it on to someone else in return. Okay. So, what's our job now? We need to lay a strong foundation where anyone, not just orphan immigrants, can leave their fingerprints and rise up, contributing to their jobs, their companies, in America in general. True diversity will take time. It will take finding a company that cares, finding mentors and a team who can support you and, and understand if you want to take a break without questioning that. And it won't be easy, as evidenced by the statistics. It will take time, time, allies, finding strength. You'll have to remember your successes, your lessons. Remember that you're inimitable and original you're the one thing in life you can't control. And just because inclusion and diversity are different doesn't mean that the tech industry can only focus on one of them. They overlap, but they're both important to contributing financially and to the culture. And what is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden that you'll never get to see. And I hope to do that with many of you in this greatest city in the world this summer as a developer evangelist intern with Twilio. If you want to get coffee ever, find me on social media as Lucy Pika. So now let's go off and fan this spark into a flame. Thank you.